A reading from the Gospel of Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. When our firstborn son, Samuel, was nine months old, Sarah and I went to see Richard Linklater's film, Boyhood which follows the life of a boy and his family from age six to the beginning of college. It's a unique film shot over a period of 13 days. They filmed a few days each year as the actor grew up. It's also a film that hit just a little too close to home for new parents on a rare date night. With tears streaming, we watched years fly by, imagining our future. When we got home late that night, I half expected Samuel to ask for the car keys. (laughs) For lo, the days are hastening on. In one scene, we saw a nervous young child struggling to fit in as a brand new kindergartner at a new school, but but just a few moments later, Mason is celebrating his 15th birthday with a girlfriend and his first suit and tie. Watching the movie, I found myself wishing that we could, could freeze time, hit pause in the sweetest moments to fully recognize their meaning as we live them. And I was painfully aware of the reality that no such power exists, not for mere mortals. But tonight, tonight is different. On this holy night, we gather around a story frozen in time, a story that has the power to reorient every human story. Imagine that. Tonight, we hear again the words we know by heart. We sing the carols we've learned to love. We revive the traditions that have brought meaning to our own stories through the years. Yes, tonight, this story, these ancient words take center stage. The story does not change, but we do. We have, we will. The constant passage of time guarantees that reality. Tonight we remember traditions of Christmas past. For my family it was always a a pot of chili, a glass of cheer wine, and pineapple juice punch. That's a North Carolina original. And the cookies that were left over from the open house my mother always hosted for the whole congregation. Well, time marches on. The children who waited outside their parents' bedroom door with muffled laughter, those children grow up. Chairs once filled with beloved family who passed the traditions on to us, those chairs, they they sit empty. 
Year after year, we celebrate births and unions, graduations and new additions. We grieve losses. We nurse grudges. We are altered by events within and beyond our control. We change. And I think we cling to Christmas traditions because we know that we are not the same that our families are not the same, that our, our world is not the same from one year to the next. We gather in sanctuary, we seek community, we make our way to worship, we light candles, we sing carols because we long for the meaning found in what does not change. We want to pause in the power of the story, and so we gather The little town of Bethlehem was full of people that night. They had, they had all come to the home of their ancestors to be counted, not seek the Savior. You can sense the, the chaos and the overcrowding as the story is told. Too many people in that little town, too few beds. Who would notice a dusty couple poor coming in late from Nazareth? Who would have thought to take note of their arrival? They looked like everyone else, and even if the girl was obviously expecting, there is nothing especially unusual about that. Here's the truth about the birth of Jesus. Nearly everyone missed it as it was happening. They missed the moment, the, the majesty, the, the meaning. In Luke's story, all the sound and light that night came from heaven. Choirs of angels sang, brilliant stars shined, but in the stable the night was silent, the visits were brief, the attention of most people elsewhere. Writer Ted Loder imagines the perspective of the innkeeper who sees the great profit to be made by the decree that went out from Emperor Augustus, for after all, all those travelers would need a place to stay, so the, the innkeeper joyfully proclaims business at the inn's never been so good, so quickly run out and fetch some more wood, yet, yet feed the fire carefully and slow as you're able. Our profits will soar if we keep our costs stable. Just think what we'll do with the money will take a killing, praise Caesar, a killing will make. Well, the story continues, and a young couple, the woman close to giving birth, arrives at the inn, but, but they have little money, and space is limited. They are pushed to the stable out back, where the woman gives birth to a son, a bright star shines over the stable. Shepherds arrive to share news and see the baby, but, but that innkeeper, too busy inside, making sure that meals are served and beds are filled until finally all the guests have gone to sleep, the inn is clean for the night, and he can pause for a moment to count his money. When he finally learns what has happened in his barn, the innkeeper speaks words that haunt me. He speaks with regret. I never went. Spontaneity seemed an extravagance. I had my lists. After all, what difference does one baby make, more or less? There are bills to pay. There is this, this rare chance, a killing to make, perhaps for me. Three hundred steps across the yard from here to where they were. I watched a time or two. I hushed the men who yelled in the yard. They left their job tending flocks. I stayed at mine. I never went. What difference does one baby make? When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, nearly everyone missed it. Busy with all they had to do, distracted by the news of the census, preoccupied. 
too busy to duck into an alleyway and step through the mud and see the face of God in human form. And I'm afraid that's my story, more often than not. Busy, distracted, preoccupied, focused on what's next, drawn in by the headlines or the latest post, and so I fail to notice the simple joy of God's presence. Who among us tonight can can stand in judgment of the innkeeper? It is so easy to miss the most important moments as they are unfolding. Sarah and I are coaching Samuel's second grade basketball team this year, which is the most fun I've had in a long time. The truth is, I've always wanted to coach a basketball team, and and when we signed up, I made my way to Dick's immediately to buy a whistle, a pump, and one of those awesome clipboards with the diagram of a cord and a marker so you can draw plays on it. Let's just say I've had to adjust my expectations. (laughs) Most of my coaching these days amounts to reminding the players which basket is ours. In the second game, Sarah was coaching on the court, and I was assigned to the sideline. I paced back and forth. I shouted, rebound, get back, find your person, pass the ball. Near the end of the second quarter, one of our players walked over to the sideline. He had tears streaming down his face. He was overwhelmed in the moment. I quickly sent in another player and got back to my pacing and my shouting. A moment later, I remembered that I should probably check in on our hobbled teammate. I turned around, and this is what I saw. The injured player sitting on a metal folding chair, fighting back tears. A teammate next to him with his arm around the boy's shoulder. My own son, who never leaves home without a first aid kit, crouched in front of him, untying his teammate's shoe. Sam looked up, don't worry, Dad, we've got it. (laughs) It was the most important thing that happened that day, and I missed it. Friends, this is not a night for strategies or rules, for explanations or abstract theories or systematic theologies or parsing verbs. This night, you are simply invited to stop. Stop pretending. Stop posturing. Stop planning. Just stop long enough to hear the only God who comes in the cries of an infant in the night. Stop to see the sturdiest truth we know that despite it all, God could not stay away from us. The place to look this night, the place to put your full attention is a bed of straw in an old wooden manger. Their time will stand still. Throughout the season of Advent, our family has been using the prayer offered in Second's Children's Advent booklet as our dinner blessing. One person asks, someone's coming, who is coming? And the whole family answers, Jesus is coming. Let's try it. Someone's coming, who is coming? Jesus is coming. Very good. Then we pray, come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. There is room in our hearts for you. A couple of weeks ago, Sarah was out of town, and I was solo parenting for four long evenings. Getting dinner on the table was a Herculean effort and the starting gate for the nightly sprint to a reasonable bedtime. The first night, I was so proud of quinoa and grilled cheese on the menu, and I quickly gathered the boys for dinner. Let's let's eat so we can take our baths, change to pajamas, read stories, and go to sleep. We're on a roll here, boys. As I prepared to take my first bite, our son, Ben, practically screamed, Dad, wait! 
What is it, son? Time's a wasting. What are we waiting for? Dad, we have to tell Jesus about the room in our hearts. It was the most important thing that happened that day, and I almost missed it. You know, the story could have been different for the innkeeper. It's once a pageant held in a tiny church in a small town, and all the key parts were played by children in the church. The child who had the part of the innkeeper was an awkward boy. He was not at all comfortable being in the spotlight. He was a good fit for that, that minor role that required only that one sad line. The night of the pageant arrived. The story unfolded just as Luke tells it. Mary and Joseph appear at the door. The innkeeper speaks that line quickly and dutifully, if a bit anxiously, looking down. There is no room for you at the end. You could sense his relief at getting it out of the way. But then the unexpected happened. As Mary and Joseph turned and walked wearily away, the innkeeper looked up, overwhelmed with compassion and tear-filled eyes. He spoke a line that does not appear in any ancient or modern script. Wait a minute, he called out to the couple. Don't go away. You can have my room. Tonight the clock stands still. Time is frozen for just these few moments. Tonight we can recognize the importance of the experience as it comes to us. We can be like Mary, the only one wise enough to simply ponder the moment the majesty, the meaning. We can all be like that. As the poet Auden writes, to those who have seen the child, however dimly, however incredulously, the time being is the most trying time of all. Remembering the stable, where for once in our lives, everything became a you, and nothing was an it. Tonight, this moment, for once in our lives, you don't want to miss that. Amen.